Stan Gibalisco here. I have a few more thoughts about the so-called hum phenomenon, uh, which I have discovered is a lot more common than I ever imagined. A lot more people have heard this hum than I ever thought uh, would hear it. It sounds, it sounded to me when I heard it in Wisconsin, just like a very low frequency, maybe 40, 50, 60 hertz hum, which I could still hear and especially hear if I plugged my ears, indicating that it was not a sound coming from an external source, but something else was causing it. And I immediately began to develop theories, trying to stay away from the sensationalism, the conspiracy theories, the extraterrestrials, and other such things like that, and thinking, what could actually produce this sound? Because I was really hearing it. And fortunately, it didn't particularly bother me. Uh, in the, the ordinary uh, sounds of everyday life would mask it. I could only hear it the same way you sometimes hear a little bit of a ring in your ears. You can sometimes hear the, your own pulse. I can sometimes actually take my pulse by listening to that sound. And, and my theory was that an external electromagnetic field was affecting the hemoglobin in my blood. Now hemoglobin, as you may or may not know, but you know now, contains iron, which is an electrical and a magnetic conductor. It's a ferromagnetic material as well as an electro, uh, electrical conductor. So a powerful electromagnetic field or sufficiently powerful electromagnetic field might be expected to cause your red blood cells, each of which, if you're not too iron poor, contains some hemoglobin. It might cause these cells to actually vibrate a little bit in consonance with the frequency of the electromagnetic field. In this case, somewhere around 40, 50, or 60 hertz. Uh, there are a lot of things uh, only in the past 100 to 200 years that have developed around us, a lot of environmental uh, phenomenon and factors that humanity has never before experienced in all of the thousands or tens and or even hundreds of thousands of years of our existence. It's a brand new sort of environment that we live in and there are a lot of things that can happen that we don't know about yet and a lot of things that we may never know. But I suspect that the vibration of those red blood cells could actually be heard inside my inner ear if it was a sufficiently powerful vibration and particularly with my ears plugged. Not despite plugging them, but especially when all external sounds were silenced. Because you see, this is not an external sound. This is an internal conductive sound. So I thought, well, how could, how could I really stop that if it was important to me to stop it? And apparently it causes quite a lot of people considerable distress. This is not tinnitus, the high, higher frequency pitched noise that you may sometimes hear. I hear it if I take too much ibuprofen, for example. I have some pain issues and if I take a lot of ibuprofen for a few hours afterwards, I will have a little bit of this tinnitus, this, this high pitched tone. This is not a high pitched tone. This is a very low, low pitched tone. And uh, it just sounded like a sine wave at a very low frequency. I suppose if I was old enough, it'd be too low for me to hear and I'd be immune to it. But I wasn't quite old enough yet. and Maybe I am too old now. <laughs> maybe that's why I don't hear it anymore. But if it is a problem for you, there's some things you can do to find out where it's coming from or where it might be coming from. First of all, if you go out in the middle of a lake in a boat, somewhere far, far away from power lines, out in the middle of a, of a ranch, and 
like the Longwave Ranch in Wyoming, recently sold, or somewhere far away from any kind of alternating current electrical utility source. If you still hear the hum, it's probably not coming from the power lines. It's probably coming from somewhere else, like maybe some top secret massive military installation uh, designed for the purpose of communicating with submarines. They were at one time actually proposing covering the whole state of Wisconsin with an antenna for that purpose. Imagine the hum that people might hear if that actually did do what I suspect it might do. But no such luck. The Cold War ended. Now we have other problems. But if you don't hear that sound, then it's coming from something other than the utility lines. If the sound goes away and then comes back when you get near utility lines, and especially if you like stand under a high voltage power line, then it probably is coming from the electric AC utility. Well, Wherever it's coming from, whether it's coming from a top secret military installation designed to communicate with submarines, whether it's coming from UFOs, whether it's coming from some sort of supernatural plane or just the ordinary power lines, it's probably an electromagnetic field affecting the hemoglobin in your blood. That is my theory. How do you stop that? Put yourself in a Faraday cage an electromagnetic shield and chicken wire will work just fine for that. So if you surround your bed, <laughs> if it bothers you most at night, and I saw these videos, you know, people thrashing in their beds in agony over this horrible hum that they were hearing, and I don't deny that it may be horrible for some people, a Faraday cage would block that electromagnetic field regardless of what it's caused by. Chicken wire, electrically um, uh, continuous, surrounding you. Another way to test it would be to just get in your car, which at that low frequency would serve as a perfectly good Faraday shield, or into the uh, trailer portion of a semi-tractor, or a semi-trailer truck. Something metal, uh, any kind of metal enclosure, preferably with a good solid earth ground and without any electrical utility lines protruding inside. So surround your bed with a big chicken wire box. I suggest like maybe six foot high. Uh, if it's a single bed, maybe six foot wide. If it's a king size bed, maybe 12 foot wide and uh, long enough to just, you know, enclose your bed with a Faraday cage, okay? A little door, you know, with a chicken wire door. And then you shut yourself in there and you are shielded from all external electromagnetic fields below the very, very, very ultra-high frequencies and microwave frequencies. But these low-frequency uh, fields, such as might come from an AC line or from this uh, proposed or supposedly perhaps actually existing military uh, installation would be blocked and couldn't get inside that shield. So if you're really tortured by this hum, that is what I suggest you do. Corny as it sounds, and make sure that you provide a solid earth ground that it's electrically continuous all the way around you above and below, to your left and to your right, and over your head, under your feet, a box, an electromagnetic Faraday shield coffin in which you can sleep and presumably the hum will go away. I suggest that if you're really tortured by that, you go to one of these places like Menards or Mills Fleet Farm or whatever they call these Sam's Club, these large stores and get one of these and build yourself a chicken wire enclosure, a Faraday cage, also called an electrostatic or electromagnetic uh, 
shielding cage and sleep in there. Tell me if it works. I mean, you know, if you actually try this experiment, I suggest you do. And if, and if you're really thrashing in your bed in that kind of agony from this hum, you'll be willing to try just about anything, won't you? Even something as corny as something suggested by amateur radio operator and proprietor W1GV. Then those are my call letters. W1GV, Whiskey One, Good Vibrations, saying so long and good luck from the black holes of Dakota Territory, United States of Abundant Potential Problem Solutions. Until next time, so long.